Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Hilma Dimark. This edition's top stories. Debate on the estimates of revenue and expenditure underpins the government's socio-economic agenda in mitigating the effects of COVID-19. The Ministry of Health extends its vaccination drive for homebound individuals. Taiwan's ambassador to St. Lucia experiences the impact of the ICT education program. Debate on the estimates of revenue and expenditure 2021-2022 came to an end Thursday, March 2021. Underpinning the debate was government's efforts at balancing lives and livelihoods during the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment Honorable Leonard Montoot told the House that in this fiscal year, the ministry will prioritize the development of a graduation strategy to open pathways to its self-reliance for its beneficiaries by facilitating their access to work opportunities. The approach of graduation from social assistance programs does not mean that beneficiaries will lose all forms of support from the government, but rather it means that there will be greater focus on connecting beneficiaries to different resources and establishing a pathway into other forms of support as needed, including skills training, access to microfinance, agricultural support programs, and social services, among others. In other words, beneficiaries will be assisted in moving from a place of dependence to one of independence. Other capital projects allotted under the Ministry of Equity include the 10th cycle of the Basic Needs Trust Fund to the tune of $2.045 million, the Home Caregivers Program at $7.7 million, and the Youth Empowerment Project at $4.5 million. Honorable Montute indicated that his ministry is actively pursuing opportunities for greater citizen involvement in nation building. We are going to be proposing at an incremental, incremental phase initially, the return of local government election. We are also working in, in collaboration with the Ministry of Finance to look into the possibility of having local constituency councils collect property taxes, a percentage of which will be retained for their purposes and use in their communities. Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Honorable Leonard Montute. The Ministry of Health has reported that more than 19,000 St. Lucians have received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. The COVID-19 vaccination drive is now catering to individuals who are homebound due to age or illness or even immobility. Vaccination teams have been within the communities to reach these individuals within their home setting to ensure their inclusion in the national vaccination drive. Many of these people are at high risk of severe COVID-19 due to their age or health conditions. Tekla Jabatis is the Assistant Principal Nursing Officer and Immunization Manager in the Ministry. Based on the number of people to be engaged, the vaccination committee this week made the decision to continue to target the homebound in the coming week, March 22nd to 26, 2021. We ask all who require this service to contact the nearest community wellness center to register for vaccination at home. In early February 2021, the Ministry of Health and Wellness received official confirmation from the Pan American Health Organization of its allocation of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. The announcement indicated that this stock would arrive in country at the end of the first quarter of 2021. A total of 74,400 doses were allocated through this platform. With the expectation of receiving the first tranche of these vaccines in the coming weeks, the ministry will then be rolling out phase two of the national vaccine campaign. During this phase, mass vaccination will be focused on sectors at moderate risk of exposure to COVID-19. Amongst these will be the transportation, education, and tourism sector personnel. As we approach this phase, updates will be issued to indicate the schedule and sites at which the vaccines will be provided. 
Meantime, the Ministry of Health continues to receive support from private business organizations in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. More in this report from Funel Neptune. The Ministry of Health recently received a donation of COVID-19 vaccine stickers and fuel vouchers from Seoul Easy Limited and First National Bank to aid in the successful rollout of the COVID-19 vaccination drive. General Manager of Seoul Easy Limited, St. Lucia and Dominica, Deborah Raphael Edwards says, it was necessary to make a contribution towards combating the COVID-19 pandemic and also giving back to the hard-working nurses. Fall is limited as good corporate partners. When we found out that the, the stickers were indeed running out and there, there was a small need within the ministry, we thought it fitting that we should partner with the ministry. Given that COVID has been a very difficult time for us as solutions, and as you've heard, even what Ms. Lord said, hope, we are really and truly round in the corner. So we decided that we would come on board with the ministry to partner we think this is just the first of many opportunities to work with the ministry. Manager of Projects and Services of First National Bank, Robert Ferrier, says his organization is aimed at caring for St. Lucians and giving back to the community. We are here as an indigenous institution to support you in whatever way that we can. And so I extend that support further once it's necessary. First National Bank will be there as an indigenous institution supporting the ministry and, and of course the people of St. Lucia by extension. Director of the Bureau of Health Education, Natasha Lloyd Felix, expressed heartfelt gratitude to First National Bank and Sol Easy Limited for the donation and says it will be very instrumental in the advancement of the COVID-19 vaccination drive. That sticker has done so much for us at the ministry because people came forward when we had none left asking for their stickers, wanting pictures with their stickers and found themselves in a position to become advocates on behalf of not only the Ministry of Health but for St. Lucia to ensure that we led the charge collectively as a nation to give hope for a change for the better, a hope for us to return to what's normal and a hope that we now can move forward collectively as a nation to take charge of our health and our well-being. So if you've seen the value of these stickers, which I think is more of a statement than a sticker, says a lot. Because though small, it's very tangible, it's very meaningful. And so we thank you with great gratitude. The ministry also thanked private physician Dr. Tanya Brobre for her dedication and commitment in mobilizing the private business organizations to support the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccination drive. The Ministry of Health received a total of 20,000 COVID-19 vaccination stickers, $1,000 fuel vouchers, and thermal flask bottles. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. Taiwan's ambassador participated in an online class of the Sir Iris Simmons Secondary School. As he experienced the classroom environment, students have become used to online in the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic. Lisa Joseph reports. The education system in St. Lucia is coping and adapting to abrupt changes due to COVID-19. The shift to digital learning has posed challenges while simultaneously offering opportunity to enact new teaching methods. As such, authorities continue to innovate in order to provide the best online education experience for teachers and students. The governments of St. Lucia and Taiwan, through collaborative effort, engineered the ICT in Education project. The project aims to create smart classrooms as a means of tackling some of the issues which include the unavailability of technology, and low student morale. Sir Ira Simmons Secondary is one of the schools benefiting from the pilot on this project. Ambassador of Taiwan, His Excellency Peter Chen, and officials from the Ministry of Education joined a fifth form class of Sir Ira Simmons to experience the online learning environment. I recently read about a company called Zibling that has used drones to deliver medicine surprise in Ghana since 2016. This year, they have even started to deliver 
COVID-19 vaccines to rural areas making proper road works. This is where ICT shine brightest, developing creative methods which help ensure equitable access. The company's founder is Mr. Keller Renato, a young and energetic entrepreneur who loves robotics and ICT. And he is not much older than you all. So you can become the next Keller Renato. Think about what you want to do with your time and effort. Ambassador Chen extended appreciation to the classroom teacher for the opportunity to join the session and for her diligent effort to teach in. English teacher at Sir Ira Simmons, Abigail Jean-Joseph, says she was honored by the visit. It was an opportunity to present how we integrate technology in the teaching and learning environment and how we try to motivate students and teach them while they're at home. Um, we're also benefited or we have benefited from a lot of technology, a lot of devices so that our school can become a smart school. And so it was a wonderful experience to show how we use things like Book Creator and Classcraft, how we've gamified the Google Classroom so that students can participate fully and be motivated even while at home. Chief Education Officer in the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, was also in attendance. She challenged the students to help motivate their peers to attend classes. Do you know why? The resources have been made available to you. The teachers are trying to be as creative as possible with you, doing things out of the box to encourage you. And I can appreciate, I know it's been a difficult time. I know that most of us have had enough, but let, let us hold on. Let us hold on just a little longer and persevere through these times because they will come to an end. But what we cannot do at this time is to allow for our lack of participation to impact, to impact our education. Teacher Jean Joseph thanked the students for their participation in the fruitful discussion with officials. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. As St. Usha continues to celebrate the contribution of women to national development, Minister for Education, Innovation, and Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigabat lauded the strides made in country. In a statement to the House of Assembly, Honorable Rigabat pointed out that St. Usha had distinguished itself as a country where women dominate more than 50% of leadership positions in the public service, private sector, and in civil society organizations. Honorable Rigobert also congratulated WPC Bridget Algodel on becoming the first female sergeant of arms to serve in the House of Assembly. Algodel has been a member of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force for 23 years. I salute the many women who have served on the front lines of the last year and continue to make extraordinary sacrifices as they do their part to preserve the lives of St. Lucians, serve in the various service sectors in banks, supermarkets, markets, community shops, in hotels, nursing homes, and caring for the elderly. We recognize in particular our female farmers and women fishers for their part in meeting the need of the population for food. Wherever you may turn your attention, from the home to the classroom, the market to the bank, the Herculean efforts of women tell of their commitment to the social and economic development of our beautiful country. The Honorable Minister highlighted some of the strides made by the Department of Gender Relations in recent years, including the development of a national gender equality policy and strategy. Over 100 public officers received training in gender concepts and analysis, and a core of accounting and planning officers in the public service were trained in gender budgeting and planning through a CDB-funded initiative. This was in preparation for the identification and establishment of gender equality focal points across the various ministries, departments, and agencies of government so that we can actually mainstream gender in St. Lucia's national development. St. Lucia is one of nine Caribbean countries participating in a multi-million dollar project. 
enabling gender responsive disaster recovery, climate and environmental resilience in the Caribbean. The theme for International Women's Day this year is Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority has taken a major step to improving solid waste disposal on island. Roger Varro, Lawrence reports. Given the thrust towards St. Lucia's new waste management system, a policy decision was adopted to make St. Lucia landfill-free by 2030. The first phase towards achieving this included termination of landfilling at the VF4 Solid Waste Management Facility in 2019, which was well beyond its operational limits. The next phase was commissioning and operationalizing four pyrolysis units at the VF4 transfer facility. It runs on a pyrolysis where you have oxygen uh, brought in to interact with uh, initial flame for a start. Chamber temperature goes up. The chambers can reach up to 1,100 degrees Celsius. 45 minutes, 60 minutes, your waste will be done. In that inter intervening process, the waste will be uh, processed in the chamber and then emissions will be brought through the, the scrubber system and through the filtration system and via this, this novel system that's patented what you get out is vapour and stripped of its emissions. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority aims to decentralise waste disposal in the south. The operating cost for one of those machines were, is estimated in the range of about 5,000 Eastern Caribbean dollars per month. That's with labour and electricity, water and all of those things. On a yearly basis, even if it costs more than operating at the landfill, however, you don't ever need that battle of trying to find another 30 acres of land in the next 20 years. Commissioning of the units and training personnel to operate them was undertaken in January. This site will be used for waste disposal and data collection, which is expected to cause changes in the residential waste assortment system. It will reduce the waste volumes down to, to so little that it will, you could actually use the current facilities that we have almost for forever because you're pretty much getting rid of ash to a point right now. The implementation of this technology will reduce the quantity of waste being transferred to the north, the cost of transportation, and the impact to the Deglo landfill. The remaining phases will establish facilities at various locations around the island to treat waste closer to the point of generation, effectively reducing transportation of waste. The Curina pyrolysis technology is relatively simple, and most of the parts and processes can be managed by local engineers and service personnel. For the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with Novella Quiol. Twenty twenty is a year that we do not want to revisit. It was tough, frustrating and scary. From family to friends to co-workers and clients, someone we know has been affected one way or another from this pandemic. Let us take responsibility for ourselves and the lives of those around us. On an island of 182,790 people, one life lost rocks the entire nation. So let us overcome this together. Wear a mask. Wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. Stay home and social distance. Share accurate information. Sanitize your hands frequently. Get registered for your COVID-19 vaccine today. Let us bring our society, economy and health back to normal. Together. 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 Together we can win this war. This message is brought to you by the management and staff of Invest St. Lucia. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Novella Quayol. Ms. Yota, Irma. Ms. Madame Department, Kine Vescosabilite, Pue Formation, Gouvernement St. Lucie, GIS, Asimipi Television National Paya NTN, Kapuzito Novella Quayol, Puezateo, Primus Hutchinson. Premier Ministre, Ministre des Affaires Finances, à cette ci 
Honorable Allen Chastney déclaré que il a pas dépenses qui commencé l'année passée pour entrer en année ici à ce divers projet gouvernement qui plus haut. Les mois contribution à ce budget l'année ici pour l'année prochaine en cas consiste mercredi le 10 à mars 2021 qui a rentré de 1 billion 638 millions 600 000 et 900 dollars. Premier ministre Chastney a annoncé que l'année 2002 pour vendre c'est une qui a posé un lot de fracassement comme situation qui a existé présentement, qui a resté présent, moi, il la vie tant, toujours. Selon le ministre Chasney, la situation est là, c'est un résultat de la maladie Corona. Le ministre a déclaré que la maladie Corona faiblit sérieusement, a blité le pays pour amasser des gros l'argent qui était nécessaire pour bien accueillir l'économie cette ci Le ministre Chasney dit que la l'homme l'argent que le gouvernement a supposé amasser pour 2020 descend pas 267.7 millions de dollars passé l'année 2019 pour 2000 pour 2000 et ça c'est en perdant de 218.6 millions de dollars au résultat de ça selon le ministre Lucia la l'homme l'argent que le gouvernement n'y espoir pour amasser c'est 883.9 millions de dollars le ministre Chasne dit aussi Majorité pour filles qui étaient sorti par taxes réduit par la musique, principalement taxes pour propriétaires et taxes internationales. Il dit que les taxes de services et reports descendent par 10,39 millions de dollars. Le gouvernement a aussi côté taxes que les citoyens payent à payer tous les années, qui est 7 fois plus bas, par 7,67 millions de dollars. Alors, selon le Premier ministre Chasney, la maladie Corona a l'habilité de pays là pour amasser des gros taxes, particulièrement en secteur touristique et l'autre secteur qui est plus avancé en pays là. Le Premier ministre Chasney a déclaré que, malgré tout ce tête de choses que le gouvernement a expérimenté, l'implémentation du budget pour 2020 pour 2021 a expérimenté un improvement en hauteur de 16,9% pendant l'année 2019 pour 2020. Le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney a déclaré que, à ce que le gouvernement a apprécié que, des gros dépenses payées sorties 2000 pour 2020 pour 2021, qui ont arrivé en hauteur de 41,7 millions de dollars, et ça c'est 40,7 millions plus que l'année 2019 ou 2020. Mais quand même, les mots là, c'est 68 millions de dollars plus bas qui budget qui a révisé pour l'année 2020 pour 2021, en hauteur de 309,5 millions de dollars. Gouverneur général pour cette leçon a passé de Mpelet Louise recentement trouvé coup de la vaccine AstraZeneca. Et pour raison cela, qui a encouragé cette leçon pour protéger Koyo, la famille et l'autre monde contre méchant maladie corona. Selon de Mpelet, malgré qu'il déjà pris la vaccine en temps avant, espérance la saison qui était très confortable pour lui. De Mpelet dit qu'il a déjà trouvé la vaccine pour maladie malaria, il a été voyagé pour pays Afrique. Et moi, j'ai tenu un petit peu pour prendre la vaccine 9 salas. Mais après, j'ai indiqué que et lui concerné la vaccine, et aussi les mesurer et balancer ces avantages contre ça qui ne peut pas avoir l'avantage concerné la vaccine. Il décide pour lui-même, si j'ai placé confiance à docteur pour plus que 70 ans, il a quoi Il confié toujours. Le gouverneur général a dit aussi, c'est une décision qui a un café volontairement, mais pour point coup de la vaccine, ça là, et qui, il s'est compris qui y a un caïnion type mais il a encouragé les autres individus pour bâtir la foi et aller pour la vaccine. De pour le faire comprendre qui, ils savent y a bon de toi mon négatif la vaccine, par conséquence de toutes ces paroles y a qu'attend contre la vaccine, ça y a qu'attend et quoi à ce média social, ça veut dire internet, WhatsApp, et aussi télévision, existent les professionnels santé qui parlent contre lui. Alors ça a placé Pérez parmi les individus. C'est le gouverneur général là pour plusieurs années on y confiance en ces remèdes qui docteur Kabao sans me dire pièce question. Alors la vaccine n'est pas différent qui se remet au capoin pour pisser doux, prêche, en parmi l'autre maladie. Le gouverneur général a dit que l'année, il y a deux ou trois personnes qui peuvent peser du et aussi, il peut faire, 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 il peut fa
appropriate dose of vaccine seller. Gouvernement s'est laissé à bas ministère des Affaires et Constructions et Travaux. Présentement, qu'on travaille à ce projet pour improuver la meilleure opération de trafic à Opicon, en Power SV4, avec la FAG à Choisey. À bas ce projet de trafic, c'est pour placer à travers ces chemins une façon pour contrôler les grilles vitesses qui sont ouvertes à conduire l'auto. Ça, c'est ça qu'on est comme Speed Bombs. La CAIN est aussi Sinders Trafic et plusieurs marques trafic pour guider le chauffeur l'auto. Pour faire plus à l'aise pour les chauffeurs l'auto et les gens qui ont servi ces chemins. La façade au Picon, c'est un second chemin vieux fort pour construire le bon stadium de l'autre l'homme. Côté plusieurs accidents j'ai fait et la dernière fois, tu as dit qu'il y a la mort. À ce façade de la FAG, à choisir, la CAIN est épouvement, à ce grand chemin pour entrer le bordage à ce supermarket 9 Massy. Le gouvernement n'y espoir que c'est une initiative, ça là, ensemble avec l'éducation publique, qui a aidé ou aidé à ce monde trouver blessé pour ne pas perdre la vie et de régler l'accident qui a fait à ce chemin. Le ministère des Affaires et Construction a encouragé le chauffeur l'auto pour servir le chemin PIA et puis en pile pour caution. Obéir sin trafic et couper à sa vitesse qui a conduit l'auto. Le projet a été supposé pour commencer, tout à présent il est supposé commencer. Et uh, ça c'est côté, monsieur, madame, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là. Je vais remercier autant pour regarder. Je vais avoir une invitation. Je n'ai plus encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous avez pris cette nouvelle à Creole. Je vous souhaite tout le monde une bonne fin de semaine et que ça c'est pour moi, je vous souhaite tout le monde. Merci, Appeal Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You could also catch up with us at any time on the St. Pusha Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Huma Dimar.